Hello everyone, this is Jury again. Um, I'm here with another quick demo on how to do four different types of underpaintings. Um, so uh, we're going to start with just having a uh, prime gray um, canvas, this is canvas paper, as well as um, I did a cartoon, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my drawing to my canvas paper um, and then I'm going to do a quick separation of light part and dark part um, and that's going to be my first underpainting and I will show you guys in depth of that and that's just a quick blocking of separation um, I tend to use this type of underpainting a lot um, because I just need like a clear separation of what's going to be in a light mass and what's going to be in a dark mass and it's just a fast way to go about getting that quick separation so I'm gonna quickly talk about a cartoon so you guys um, cartoons are basically just that they're transfers so um, cartoons actually um, comes from the Renaissance era what a lot of them would do um, a lot of artists of that era they would draw out and some will even work out their um, their value range as well um, but they would draw out uh, early on their composition and then when they get to a point where the drawing is accurate and where it needs to be they would take the drawing and transfer it to their canvas um, uh, or, or, or wood whatever they're working on and then they'll begin their painting from there so I actually did a um, a cartoon on a drawing sheet of paper so I drew this all out you can see a little bit of my history just a little bit it's very faint and light um, and then uh, I actually photocopy this because I know I'm gonna do four different um, underpaintings and I don't want to redraw and redraw and redraw so I did a photocopy of it that way I can just transfer it um, so <clears throat> This is my photocopy of my actual drawing. So what I did with this, and this is something we will do in class, is I um, I know I'm going to transfer it. So on the back of my um, photograph is, um, is actually graphite. So I put graphite on the back of it. That way um, I can transfer uh, my drawing to my actual um, canvas paper. Um, and this is a way of doing it, that way like the drawing is all done, I just need to transfer everything, that way I can get my underpainting done. So when, and when we're in class, we're going to do our drawing <laughs> for painting one, um, and then we're going to transfer uh, the drawing onto our um, canvas paper, that way we don't have to worry about redrawing and redrawing for these four paintings. Alright, so I'm going to start, normally what I do, I use a either red ballpoint pen, are gonna be black but I try to use a different color than what it's already on the paper so when you transfer um, you're just comp copying you're just transferring over your um, lines that you drew and then as you can see from the pressure I'm transferring that line so I'm gonna do this Thank you. 
All right, you guys, so I have it transferred. Actually, my tape came off just a bit at the beginning um, where I had to reline everything, so I need to make sure my tape is on <laughs> when I transfer my next one. Um, so as you can see, the drawn is quickly transferred, um, and that's really all um, we need for that cartoon. And you guys are gonna transfer a lot better than I am, I do not know why my hands are a bit um, wobbly but I'll fix the lines just a bit just get things a little bit under control all right yeah so when it comes to this you're going to need um, I'm using a uh, gray um, paint so I just mixed up ivy gray with um, titanium white. I added a little bit more ivy gray because I wanted it just a little bit darker than um, my gray tone that's here. Then you're going to need liquid in. Um, so I'm using liquid in fine detail. This is not the bottle that it normally comes in. My bottle kind of broke apart <laughs> so I had to change it and put in another bottle but this one is a regular liquid in. Um, I'm not using this fine detail. It's a little bit more, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit more juicier. Um, um, this is a little bit more stiff, but you can definitely use liquid in for glazing as well. So I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid in fine detail. Looks like syrup. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm going to do is just take um, a paintbrush. So right now I'm just using a round paintbrush. Opening up my uh, my gamsaw container because I just wanna uh, just dip my paintbrush because it was a bit dry. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this uh, liquid and fine detail, and I'm gonna thin out my paint with it. 
Then I'm going to take this. And I do have my actual um, my actual composition in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and separate light part from dark part. Alright you guys, so as you can see my palette is kind of here, you can see my um, fine detail liquid in that's here. Um, I did dip into a little bit of that number 5 because I wanted to get a little bit of a definition of what's happening at the top plane on shifts. Um, they are reaching a little bit of light but um, I also wanted the shadow side to be a shadow side. So right now on my objects I have a clear separation of what's in the light mass and also what's in the shadow mass what's in the light mass what's in the shadow mass light mass shadow mass i also have some mid-tone ideas that are there too so i would let this dry um and then once it's dry because it's just my underpainting i'm just separating light part from dark part but once it is completely dry I would go back in and I would use, um, I would think of it and I would paint it as if it was a grisaille. So I would use values of 1 through 9 or 1 through 5 and I will mix all that and I would go into painting the whole painting. But this is just an underpainting. It's just separate my part from dark part before we actually paint with thin paint that we thinned with, um, liquid and fine detail so it dries fairly quickly so you guys um this is underpainting number one i'll see you in the next clip Hey everyone, so in this clip, um, we're going to go over how to do a wipeout underpainting. So um, I've already transferred my cartoon of my um, still life. It's transferred to the canvas. The canvas is gessoed, but it's, I left it white. So um, I'm going to take the cartoon transfer off. So when it, in this demo, um, when it comes to wipeout, it's just that. So what we're going to do is I have my palette here. I have my um, poppy oil. That's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to put that on my palette. Just a little bit. I also need to get a... Um, get my trusty rag. <laughs> Let me get my rag and cut a little piece off. Or my t-shirt, that's really what it is. Um. Once you have your rag, and I need to get some gloves because I don't want to get this on everything. So... have my gloves which are not the best protection right now gotta get some more <laughs> but you want to make sure that I just don't want to get oil paint all over my hands so I'm pouring a little oil I'm going to take my uh, value 5 Mix in that oil with that value 5. And I want to touch 
cover this up. So you're gonna cover it up until you see, you still can see your drawing and it'll just be a ghost. So now that I have my drawing covered, and remember we have oil that's there, so I want to get another piece of rag because I want to be able to really scrape out um, and wipe out. So when you think about wiping out, it's somewhat similar to... Um, charcoal wipe out but not really the same um because really we're just in the underpainting i'm just going to focus on separating white part from dark part um there is time where because it's just oil you can add um darker values if you want to if need be but for me i keep it very simple and um because of the underpainting i just need to see the separation of what's in the light mass and what's in the dark mass of my objects so right now I'm just getting some more of my t-shirt cut up, that way I have um, something to use. So, once again, I'm looking at my um, still life that's in front of me, and I just want to separate light part from dark part. Another thing that you can definitely use is a cotton, uh, a cotton. I don't know if it's cotton swab, I don't know if you would call it that, or a Q-tip. Um, this helps with just getting details. I try to get the pointy ones, the ones that points at the end, or if I want to get some wider areas, I can have the flatter side. But this also um, helps with fine details. So I'm just going to go in and separate some areas out. I'm gonna wipe out as much as I can. Thank you. 
So you guys, I'm going to turn off my light. That way I can get a, a little bit of a better idea without too much glare. But you can see I have my light part wiped out, light part wiped out. Um, of course, I can lighten this up just a bit if I want to or wipe out. Um, but I know that's my mid-tones that's there. So I can definitely do that. Um, but I can see here that this is my light part of the planar shifts. And if I wanted to, I could could um, come in with a paintbrush. And if I want to add more like darker paint to this area that gives it a little bit more of a depth, I can do that. So let me do that just so, quick, so you guys can get an idea of what that looks like. So I have some of my darker paint and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna have more, um, more oil, like actually more paint than oil. I can come in and darken this part if I want to. Kind of just scumbling it in just a bit. Not too much though. And I'm not sure if I want to use the term scumbling. <laughs> Because Kamalina is just a dry brush and paint. But this kind of gives you an idea of how you can get it just a little bit darker. So that'll give me, okay, this is in my light mask, this is my mid tone, this is my dark mask. Um, if I want to do it here, because this is darker than. Um, then my top plane that's here. Oops. Of course. <laughs> and once again, if you can see my palette, um, I am mixing uh, the darker gray that I have, but I'm using where um, the oil is um, because I wanted to still be um, very uh, thin paint. So now, <laughs> what you're seeing is, this is my light mask, this is my dark mask, if I want to come in and get a, another third value for this cast, cast shadow, because I'm saying, okay, this is darker, we want to separate it from the shadow side of the ball, or the sphere. Do that. So, like I said, so this is the wipe out method, and what I basically did is I wiped out um, my light mask. I um, wiped out my light mask on this cube as well as this object, and I got in some lighter areas that's on the table um, ground plane as well as in. Um, some lighter areas in the background and um, 
I wanted to add a little, at least a third value instead of having just two separations of values. So I came in and I blocked in some of my um, darker values that's here. Um, so I probably got a little too dark here, but <laughs> what I um, with this underpainting, what you can do is you can um, allow it to dry, and because it's oil, it's gonna take a while. So you probably would have to give it um, a couple, mm, a few days, and just make sure. And plus, I use poppy seed oil, so that definitely does take a little bit longer to dry. Um, so you have to allow it to dry, um, and then once it's dry, you can go in. You can, let's say, you want to do a brazai with this, you can go in and paint over do your brisai um or you want to add color you can add color but you have a very simple separation of value range that is here when it comes to your underpainting so you have a clear idea of what's in your light mask what's in your shadow mask you also have a little bit of a three-tone method ha happening here um that definitely helps with that too so I will see you guys in the next clip. We're going to do a um, Bernay underpainting, but we're going to use wash washes. Um, so, in the next clip. Hey everyone, so next we're going to do um, a wash. So we're going to do a Bernay wash. Um, so I'm going to use burnt umber. So as you can see, I have my cartoon that's here. I have my graphite and I've transferred my um, drawn already to the paper. So I'm going to take this off. And you want to use burnt umber so I have my burnt umber that's here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some some of my gamsol and I'm gonna take my flat wash brush that's here as you can see and then I want to thin out my paint again, make sure it's nice and thin. I want to wash. So I got a nice little soup of uh, paint that's there. Um, that's a good way of thinking about it. <laughs> make you some soup. So I'm gonna just put that across my um my composition that's here, my painting. So you wanna still be able to uh, faintly, you wanna still be able to see your drawing through it. Um, and once again, this um, is my paper canvas and it is uh, gessoed. Just so it white. So now that I have my wash over it, I know there's a shine and glare that's happening from the camera. I'm gonna take the that way we get a little bit of that shine that's gone <laughs> so now that we have that um, I'm gonna move my palette over here really quick what I want to do is I'm gonna take I'm still looking at um, my uh, still life that's in front of me so I'm gonna take my brush take my round brush I want to take some paint from my burnt umber, um, but I don't want the paint to be uh, soupy. I probably want it more buttery or creamy. Um, I still have a little bit of Gamsol in it, um, but I don't want it to be extremely um, soupy. 
So now what I'm going to do is just separate light part from dark part. So you can see that my paint is still very thin. But I'm coming in with darker, um, darker value.
Alright you guys, so this is just a quick wash um, with a um, a little bit of a white belt, as you can see. So, um, once again, it's an underpainting. We just want to get a quick idea of where's the light mass, where's the shadow mass, and possibly some mid-tones if we can. Um, but this is a quick wash. We just use regular um, burnt umber. That's all we use. That's all I use. <laughs> I thinned it out with um, Gamsol, or you could do mineral spirits. Um, the darker areas I still use, as you can see, a lot of paint thinner, but I used more paint and less paint thinner um, or, or um, Gamsol. So this gives you an idea of how you can start a Bernay painting. So this can be the underpainting as soon as it dries, which it probably dry quite fast. You go back into it and you can start the painting process with using shades of brown. Um, so hopefully this helps. We still got one more to do. <laughs> and uh, the next one uh, will be quite fun if we get to use a little color. All right, see you in the next clip. Hey everyone, so in this clip we're going to do a quick, um, more traditional underpainting, which is the whole fat over lean method. So you're going to come in with lean paint, black in color, meaning you're going to have more um, solvent or more gamsol in your paint. Um, very, very thin paint, um, but you're going to block it in with color. So I, once again, have my little cartoon here. I've already transferred everything. You can see that I have my graphite on the back. So I'm going to take this off. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with um, um, my background first. I think that's something that's more important because I can get that blocked in really fast and then I'll probably move to um, uh, my foreground. So I want to thin out my paint with my solvent. So I'm thinking of like more of a coffee or tea kind of texture. Kind of soupy. <laughs> I just want to quickly do a quick block out of everything.
Alright you guys, so this is a quick underpainting. This method is more so fat over lean. So you start with a lean, meaning more um, gamsol or solvent in your, in your oil paints. Um, you want to start with more of a, um, maybe a milky or tea-like texture. Very, very thinned out, but you want to quickly block out what's in your light mask, what's in your shadow mask, possibly a mid-tone if you can, but you're just quickly blocking out your colors. Um, so I started in my background, went to my foreground, then went to each individual object. So this kind of is close to what I'm seeing, but because it's an underpainting, it just gives me an idea of where I can start, and then I can build my oil paint and start to develop it from there so you guys I hope that this helps um, it is a lot <laughs> um, that we're gonna be doing in class possibly on Thursday so um, <clears throat> um, I hope this helps and um, I hope we have fun with it and I hope um, you practice it uh, whatever underpainted that makes sense to you that's kind of what you take on but I know some assignments I'm gonna ask for a particular underpainting but this is a good practice to get an idea of all these different underpaintings and how to start a painting because this is the starting process this is totally not a finished piece of work it's the starting process of a painting so what I would do is allow this to dry, then you come back in and you start paint, painting over this with fat paint, meaning paint that has less solvent or less medium in it and you're just using paint. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video and I hope this helps. Bye!